Okay, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to BWTM Sports and Gaming. So, if you haven't subscribed already, please do hit the subscribe button. We really appreciate the love. If you are subscribed already and want to become a part of our paid membership, which means you are able to be involved in the chats, our live chats, and also be involved with, uh, with our, we do our live commentary nights, then please feel free, smash the join button today and we'd love to have you on board. And for those of you who are members, thank you so much for the love and support. Really appreciate your support. And I just ask you to continue supporting us at this time. OK, so let's talk about this fight that just happened. <laughs> Listen, all due respect to uh, Kalia Fai, who was the longest reigning uh, world champion. I'm going to say British world champion. Uh, long reigning world champion that really nobody, not, nobody really cared for, to be honest. And then that that's not being um, that's not being a, a rude or disrespectful. That's just as it is. You know, um, I don't know how many people know who Kalia Fire is, uh, apart from the people maybe from Birmingham and the people obviously who follow boxing intently. They wouldn't know who Kalia Fire was. And that's not being disrespectful. That's just the way it is. Or it was. Now. Looking at this fight, I'm going to be honest with you. I didn't watch the fight. I didn't watch that. F I started to watch the fight for about two rounds. And then I fell asleep. But I want to take you back to before this fight was ever made, right? Um, and I know fighters, you know, they want to make as much money as possible. You know, they want to be recognized for fighting the best in the world, blah, 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 blah. Of course, they want to make money, right? And, and that's obviously... A priority to a fighter as much as being known as the best in the world and becoming a world champion. Califi, two to three things, I know he did. He fought one of the best fighters in the world, he's going to be a Hall of Fame great. And, you know, he's been a world champion. There are two things we know that he's done, okay? Uh, recognized world champion. I don't know about being recognized as a world champion. Um, maybe as a title holder, but, uh, Recognized world champions are differing between a title belt holder and a champion. All right. We need to clear that up. A belt holder is a guy who's got a belt. Uh, he's won a, a, a world belt. But he hasn't done anything significant to significant to say, you know what? This guy, rubber stamped, is a world champion. He's one of the best in the world. So, you know. That's why I say he's a belt holder. And Danny Brown says, hey, if I hadn't fought anyone since winning, uh, Raken WBA belt four years ago. Okay, well that well that says it as as I've said it. I I'm, I can't say I've been a big follower of Califi. Not being disrespectful to me, anything. It's just time. I've got around to see everybody fight. But anyway, now if I'm correct. I could be wrong here. Roman Gonzalez signed with Matchroom, right? Or the zone. I'm sure he did. So I figured to me when they signed him up, they probably said, look. At the end of the day, uh, we're going to promote you. We need you to get a belt. And we've got a guy by the name of Califi. He's not that great. He's all right. He's okay. You can beat him. And then we can promote you in some big fights, in some big money fights. Uh, he doesn't punch that hard. He's never fought anyone like you. You know, so this is what happens. You take the belt off your fight and we'll move on. We, make, we can make lots more money out of you because guess what? You know, you are a recognized fighter. You, you, you pound for pound, one of the, you know, put as one of the, put down as one of the greatest fighters in this era, and we can do more for you than we can with Califi. All right, it's as simple as that. So, you know, uh, so yeah, so you know what? Let, let's do that. So, Califi ends up fighting, like, and Califi is like, yeah, I want to fight the best in the world. Well, you got to say that. Because you've got to sound like a champion. Oh, I want to fight the best in the world. And, you know, he's one of the best in the world. Like, you know, you know the normal spool that comes out. And, of course, the fight's made. And then, you know, people, British fans who, as, as some people say, dark chuckers, who really don't know their boxing, will think, yeah, your fight's fighting a guy who's been knocked out before. And, you know, he got knocked out, brutally knocked out. And, uh, yeah, he's 32, you know, the legs are gone. They did, they did, they did, they did. The sort of stuff that Adam Smith will tell you. Yeah, you know, like 32 years old. Has he still got the legs to do it? All right, Adam, you get in the ring. You'll find out if he's got the legs to still do it. You let Chocolate Tito punch you around the ring and find if you've got leg, if he's still got the legs to do it. Right? 
So yeah, I, the minute, the minute the fight is signed, people, somebody asks me a question, who do you think is going to win the fight? What kind of damn question is that? What kind of a damn question is that? That's, that was going to happen before the fight was signed, that was going to happen. As the fight was signed, it was guaranteed to happen. And when your fight stepped in the ring, that was going to happen. I just hope your fight got paid <laughs> enough to end up in his ass like that. That's what I hope. Because that, for me, is more is mo is for me most important. Now, when we talk about levels in boxing, you saw it right there. Round one, yeah? I swear it's round one. I'm listening to the fight. I'm listening to the corner saying, even round one or round two, a trainer, somebody said somebody out in the corner going, take your time, take your time. I'm like, oh my God. You're going in against Roman Gonzalez, who throws probably like a thousand punches around. And he's a steam train, and he'll just keep coming and coming and coming and throwing more and more and more punches like a whirlwind. And in a whirlwind, you're telling a guy, take your time. Yeah, you're guaranteed to get knocked out. And if, you're, and if you tell a fighter, take your time, mentally, he takes his time. Califi did not come out of first gear, meaning he didn't come out to take your time. He had his hands tucked up. It was missing with punches. Psychologically, if you tell a fighter to take your time, I, I, this is from a psychological standpoint, right? They will literally listen to you because they trust you. So subconsciously, when you're fighting, you're taking your time. You can't take your time against a guy who, who, who's coming to you like a whirlwind. I'd be saying, on your game. Let your hands go. Keep moving. Let your hands go. Back him up. Them the sort of stuff I'd be saying. Come on, Cal, you can do it. Not take your time when this man's coming at you a uh, uh, thousand miles an hour throwing punches left, right, centre, uh, uh, through the mill. He, he throwing punches everywhere. But by the time Cali Fi probably found himself, he probably thought that uh, uh, Groman Gonzalez had about eight hands. He probably thought, this ain't fair. Boxing only got a guy who's got two, two fists. I had to look out for two uh, the left hand and the right hand. He was getting the left hand, the right hand, the uppercut, the left hook. He was getting all... And he, and he was getting him left uppercut, right up. He was getting every front punch, every punch you could throw in the book in boxing, he was getting. And behind a high guard. That, listen, levels. That stuff don't work. You cannot do what you've been doing at British Commonwealth and European level and then go and fight, for me, a Hall of Fame great and just try and stand there and chuck a jab and throw a right hand and, and, and try and walk him back and think you're going to win the fight. Not going to happen. Not going to happen. Um, this I I won't say he was sold out. I won't say he was sold out. It's just common practice. So when you see these fighters, when you see these fighters, British fighters going in against these elite opposition, it's very rarely you're going to get that sort of upset. Particularly now, check before these fights. Look, this is something you can learn for the future. Before these fights are made, or when these fights are made, check and see the promotional deal, and see who's promoting who and what. Check and find out who the fighter is that's got. The momentum behind them. Who the fighter is you can make more money out of. Who the fighter is is more marketable. Who this fight benefits more. And then look and then look at the fight. Don't just look at the fight as he's a boxer and he's a boxer. And no. It's, this is what this fight showed me. It, this fight was a perfect example of levels. British European level fighter versus uh, a world class elite fighter. That's exactly what you saw right there. Couldn't raise his game. Couldn't get out of gear. Couldn't, couldn't find the answers when it was ne needed most. Brave guy. Strong. Tough. Durable. Great. But you can't keep taking him punches over and over and over and over and over again. Eventually you're going to get knocked out. And it's one-way traffic. What you saw there is cannon fodder. Califi was cannon fodder tonight for Roman Gonzalez. Right? Watch how this works. You fight these next gen shows. I don't, okay, I'm giving an example, right? I'm not having a dig. I'm not having a pop. Oh, you, you fight in these small hall shows or you fight in these shows knocking guys out, right? That they have no business being in the same ring as you. All right? Then what, your fight, what happened with your fight is your fight was what, like them guys your fight was fighting? That's how your fight was for Roman Gonzalez. That's as brutal as it is. And then Roman Gonzalez 
got caught with a great shot by another great fighter. You, you get that. You see that. So, there are levels to this game. And if you want to know about levels, this fight should be called the levels fight. Because that's what it was. This is another example when I talk about guys not fighting anybody to prepare them to fight. As you get, you get, that's what you get thrown to the wolves. But you can get thrown to the wolves for a number of reasons. You can get thrown to the wolves because economically you're not making any money. You, you're not doing anything to sell yourself. You're not, you, nobody knows you outside of Birmingham or Manchester or, or nobody knows you outside of, 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 of your hometown, right? So, you know, you're not marketable. You're not a cash cow. You're not bringing the money in. And you think to yourself, there are guys who are making more money than Cali Fire that have gone and been thrown to the wolves, i.e. Cal Brook, Anthony Joshua. So nobody, nobody in that camp or nobody in that, in that, in that um, is safe. Nobody's safe. You understand? You get thrown to wolves. If you're not making money, if you're not bringing in the big bucks, if you're not a superstar or you don't have potential to be a superstar, you're getting thrown to the wolves. And even if you are a superstar, if you don't manage your, your, your career correctly, you're getting thrown to the wolves. The wolves being that guy that's much better than you. The wolves being that guy that's a bit smarter than you. The wolves being that guy that punches a little, uh, much harder than you. The wolves meaning not preparing you to fight a guy to have a, a good chance of beating a guy. There was no stage, at no point, in any point of Califier's career, is he ever going to beat Roman Gonzalez. Never. No. So, no way. Levels of fighting. Califier is very pedestrian, one-paced. And that's fine, where you can pick your shots and throw your shots and take your time against guys who've got little resistance or really don't, who you can time and throw them shots to. Someone like Roman Gonzalez from round one, who was moving his head, moving in, he was, he was busy, 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 busy. Your fight was missing with punches. That can be through to match sharpness. That can be through to not training the right way. That can be because of easy opponents. It can be, and I'm not just not, this is not a Cali fight. This is not a not a new Cali fight. This is an education. And last night, what I saw right there, what I saw like right there is what happens to you who think you're a world champion, but you ain't fought no one. This is what can happen to your career. Levels, training, camp, the whole thing's a disaster. You know, um, look at, look at, look at, let's go down to the yard a second, where he stepped up against Kovalev. You know what I mean? He had that one round where we thought he, could, he threw, he, he, had, he looked like he could have stopped Kovalev. But Kovalev, you know, you look at Kovalev's background again. Look, look at look at look at Chocolatito's background. Was he eighty-eight and oh as an amateur? He's like another uh, at least uh, um, a Selena De Freitas, the one that Barry Jones fought. When you look at these guys' amateur pedigree, that can often tell you what what's going to happen in the pro game. And Califi didn't have a style that. Roman Gonzalez had ever seen, uh, hadn't seen before. He'd seen plenty of Califies and pr pun punched up a lot of Califies before. So, I'm sorry, people, if you wanted me to, to give you a review that was, you know, I hope that, because that was, the fight like that, he didn't just get knocked out of one shot. He got beaten and beaten up badly over a, a sustained beating of round after round after round. That guy... Could have broken Califi's spirit. He may come back and come back well. Look, Roman Gonzalez got knocked out and he came back. So there's all hope for Califi, but that was a that was a beating. That was outclassed, outpunched, outmaneuvered, everything. He found out how hard the sport of boxing really is. And that watching a man on television thinking, ah oh, yeah, I can beat him. And then getting in the ring and fighting a man, the reality is daring to be great. When you want to when you see daring to be great. Any dark chuckers that are out there, any people out there who are not sure about boxing and want to understand what daring to be great looks like from a British perspective, look at this fight. That's daring to be great. That is what you saw there is daring to be great.
That is the perfect... Ex you, when you look at perfect in the dictionary, that is perfect. What you'll see right there is perfect. Daring to be great. So when you hear them lines, daring to be great, it's a tough ask. A tough ask means he's, get, he's a sure whoop, he's getting an ass whooping tonight. Has he still got the legs? Meaning, we better hope he hasn't got the legs, because if he doesn't have the legs, he's going to get an ass whooping tonight. He's knocking on an age. Here's an excuse. Uh, you know, he's knocking on an age a bit now. Even though he's knocking on an age, who's the guy that the champions fought has come anywhere remote? He, has he ever fought anywhere near that class of opponent to even make the age count? Oh, it's a brave effort. You mean? You mean take your money and go home? You got paid. Thank you very much for uh, giving us uh, a card to bill for us to all make money off. Thank you very much for completing the card. Uh, we appreciate you. Thank you very much for your efforts. There's your bus fare home, mate. That's what brave effort means. Brave effort means nothing apart from here's your bus fare home, mate. On to the next boxer. I'm sorry, that's the way it is. People don't want to hear this sort of talk. But if you're a person that's going out spending money, betting on fighters, British fighters, and you get into all the, you know, the press conferences and the, and the interviews and all the hype before the fight, it doesn't make a difference when you look at this. Just remember, when you hear daring to be great, just look at that. Just look at the Cal UFI fight. And think to yourself, the levels between British world class and real world class, there is a significant difference. So that's it, really. Um, it's a short video. It's a brutal video. I hope Califi can come back and I hope he's made enough money. I made, made some good money in this fight to secure his family. And, you know, he had aspirations to come back and maybe become a world champion again. But for heaven's sake, stay away from Robin Gonzalez. Don't even talk about a rematch. Um, keep Get fighting regularly. Um, yeah, get some big domestic scraps on if you can. Um, win yourself a European title again if you can. And, uh, you know, try and go for a world title again. But, you know, I wish you all the best, Cali. If I am, I'm glad that, I, that, you know, you... You go home safe, safe and well to your family and, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, you can come again as a fighter. No shame in going to fight one of the best fighters historically. Um, there's nothing no wrong with that of getting beat by a pound for pound great. And maybe it took a pound for pound great too big for you to realise what. Uh, uh, yeah, that's another garbage I like to talk as well. Oh, yeah. Cal, you know, you know, he, he lost that fight. Yeah, listen to this one. Another another garbage statement, right? Typical garbage statement. Ah, listen. If you look, listen, I can imagine this in the office being said, look, Cal, you've got to take this fight because, you know, um, you don't do much of your career at the moment. And, you know, uh, if you win this fight, look at the doors it could open for you. And look, and even if you lose this fight, look, we'll move you up and we can get you a fight against somebody else. So you think that my moving up in weight, he was a bigger guy in that fight. That's another thing. It's, this fight is perfect. You know, in a press conference, you know, he's the bigger man on the on the night. He's the bigger man. You know, he'll be weighing in this much weight more. You know, he's taller. He's bigger. He's longer. It's the sort of rubbish that they feed you. Adam Smith and uh, the promoter will say, oh, he's bigger than him. That doesn't mean shit. Can't fight. Don't mean shit. So I don't want to hear nobody tell me on my channel, oh, he's bigger than him. There you see the fight of a guy who's bigger than the other guy. Oh, you know, Gonzalez moving through the weights. You know, he was a small guy. Then Califi looked so much bigger than him. Well, Califi, where ended up with Califi? What happened to Califi? Where did all that bigness get him? On the canvas. So don't tell me if you're bigger. Tell me if you're better. Okay? I don't want to hear him bigger. He's big at the weight. So he's big at the weight. He can be big and useless at the weight. Doesn't mean he's a big... Is he big and effective at the weight? Does he use his weight effectively? 
Does he lean on his opponent? So how much time to Califi lean on, on Roman Gonzalez? Tie him up, use his weight, push him back. The smaller guy was pushing Califi back from beginning to end. You fight for a few good punches, yeah, of course, but... And he showed lots of heart, but had no business being in the ring with Roman Gonzalez if it's purely daring to be great and you've got all the money. If he had all the money in the bank and he fought Roman Gonzalez and got beat, that's different. Fair enough. That you could call it a cash-out fight. But if you ain't making much money and you take that fight, then pfft, maintain your unbeaten record, mate. Give up your belt. But don't, don't do that. So, right, I'm going to get out of here because I've got to be other place and doing other things. But I hope you uh, kind of, I'd love to know your thoughts on the whole thing. But I said it's the perfect fight to explain uh, the, the nonsense that goes on through British boxing. Uh, how things are arranged at world boxing and the, the noise in the background is because I live by the sea. And I've got pigeons cooing along with seagulls as well. So, right, I'm going to feed these damn pigeons. I'm out of here. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you're enjoying our UFC and my career mode in UFC. It's getting exciting to so check it out. I'll be back later and doing some UFC. But as for now, have a really good day. Cali Fire, wish you all the best in your return. And I guess with Chocolatito, now you have that promotional deal and you've got a belt in your belt with you. We can see you in some other exciting fights, making more money for uh, Matchroom or DAZN or wherever you're signed to. BWTM Sports and Gaming. Don't forget to subscribe.